Hello YouTube and fellow iPhone users, if you're like me and you had to install the operating system upgrade for your Apple iPhone 3GS and it doesn't work like it used to, I have the solution for us. I'm going to ask you to endure with me and maybe empathize with some of the problems that I had with the iPhone that caused me to have to make the upgrade. So let's get that behind us first. I'm just a middle-aged guy trying to survive. I need access to my information. I need that information to be preserved for a long time. I need to not lose data and I need the ability to back it up in case I drop my phone off the ledge or into the lake or something like that. first got the iPhone, I bought it because I wanted to access full versions of websites, particularly for work, that I couldn't access on my Trio or some of the earlier generation phones. One of the problems that I had was that the browser, Safari, identified the telephone as the connection point. And where that became problematic was as these website and content provider developers began to start being conscientious about bandwidth, they started to reduce what they were providing in content, and they would send you immediately to a mobile website, a scaled down version of the full blown website. I didn't like that. That's why I bought the phone to begin with, was to get away from scaled down versions of websites and see the whole website on the phone. So I downloaded a third party browser that allowed me to specify an emulation. Atomic Web worked really good with the first version of the OS on my iPhone, but as time went by I needed to upgrade Atomic Web to be able to continue to have the latest state-of-the-art website, and finally it drove the OS upgrade because the previous versions of the OS would not support the new changes that were being made to Atomic Web. None of these problems are Apple's problem. All you need to do is go to one of their stores and they'll tell you that. Once you buy the phone, you're pretty much on your own. You can't really expect a store that's doing between $43 and $4,500 per square foot sales to have one of their salespeople or one of their geniuses devote the time to fix a problem on a two-year-old $200 product. The bottom line is, I still relied on my telephone. I relied on it for all of these things that are so central to our lives, and I expect them to continue to work. I need my phone, I need to be able to store information on it, I want it to access the web, and I need it to act like it did when I first bought it over the course of ownership. You know, one of my coworkers had suggested that because I installed a third party browser, I had somehow jailbroken my phone. First of all, I don't even like the implication that I could do something to a device that I own that would somehow be breaking it or imply that I might need to go to jail. Well, I never did anything to be able to access the phone on a direct operating system level. I didn't jailbreak the phone. I simply installed a third-party browser. The inability to play Flash on the iPhone has really been problematic. I think we have a solution for that, too. Who decided that if you inadvertently entered someone's email address, you should never be able to correct that? The inability to manipulate and save PDF files. I'm constantly getting these types of files from people I work with, from the federal government, from lots of different places. I mean, everybody uses PDF files. Why can't you save and access them and manipulate them more easily on the iPhone? Somebody at Apple that came up with that solution? Who is Stephen Jobs to legislate his morality or his version of morality and tell me what types of sites I can't access with my phone? Or even worse, what types of apps can or can't be developed for the phone? Before the federal government started enforcing the Uniform Internet Electronic Gaming Act, which basically made online poker illegal. Who was Stephen Jobs to tell me I can't run Full Tilt or one of my favorite poker websites on my phone? It'd be like General Motors telling you, you can buy our car, but if you buy one here in Detroit, you can't drive it in Cleveland. One of the other problems that I notice is that as you upgrade the iPhone through successive generations of web content providers or apps, you get more and more advertising. Can't and won't correct incorrectly entered email information. Apps that won't run without an upgrade. That's how, what drove me to the OS 4 upgrade for the iPhone 3GS. Some of you, most notably Apple users, the ones that take the head in the sand approach that say, well, I'm not having that problem, would like to suggest that somehow or other Apple has engineered this planned obsolescence that is the i3GS. I don't think they're that smart. I think they've fallen on support for this particular device. So maybe you've had some of these problems, maybe you haven't had any of these problems, but they seem to really have come to the forefront since I upgraded my Apple 3GS iPhone to the uh, version 4 operating system. I have a friend who says he's got the solution to all my iPhone problems. It's a piece of hardware and uh, apparently we're going to do a, a, an 
uh, uh, one final OS upgrade that'll solve all of our iPhone problems. Come on. So here we are at this place where I'm going to get my iPhone fixed once and for all. Come on. So here's my friend's offer to solve my problems with the iPhone. It's based on a Glock Model 17. It's basically the same uh, firearm. It's encased in this cool polymer frame. It's got a cool uh, four stock. It's got an extendable stock. It's got some really neat tactical rails and he spent a little extra money and bought some really cool optics. I think it's going to solve the problem with the iPhone once and for all. Whatever problems I was having with the iPhone, I won't be having anymore. Well, hopefully that'll solve all of my iPhone and Apple product related problems. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to answer my Android device. Hello? What's the matter? Ah.